Welcome, my friends, to another exciting episode of Sean the Magic the Gathering Guy. Yes, I'm here to tell you a true tale of terror. Nah, I'm just joking. How's it going, guys? Sean the Magic the Gathering Guy. Hope everyone's having a great day, having a lot of fun, enjoying the nice weather we got out there. Because it is, it is not bad, let me tell you. I'm doing a little spinneroo today. I'm, I'm giving myself a, a change of pace because... I know you guys don't always get to see like the background of my place and, and how things are set up in my house. So I just, you know, I want, I want you guys to know that I, I have a good time, man. And I hope you're having a good time because that, you know, sometimes we forget that stuff, right? We forget all the, all the little things that go on in our lives that make it worth living. Um, like the messes of, of, of our time. See somewhere here. Hold on. Hold on. See that? See that? I I haven't cleaned up yet. I've been busy. I get home from work. There's only so much time in a day, right? Got to duck under things in my place. You know, I'm like, oh, touching the ceiling. That's all right. It's all good. Got got my Transformers hanging with me. I mean, can't go wrong with Iron Man, right? He's awesome. Ah, you know. And then and then I look and you know you got, you know I got my cases of magic and stuff and it, it's funny. I had some stuff up on eBay that I've been trying to sell, right? And nothing has moved, by the way. Nothing has sold. And it just, it, it proves to me the liquidity of magic is not what you'd hope it is. You know, I, I'm not dropping it down to the point where I'm selling it instantly. You know what I mean? It's 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 just not how it's going. Uh, I got, I got, I got, you know, this thing goes back three or four rows, guys. And then we got cases more down here and over there and then I got stuff in the storeroom and you know like, I love it it's a lot of fun to do let me tell you it's a lot of fun you know th this this makes it worthwhile all the time every day and I love coming home to tell you guys some of the stuff that goes on and some of my thoughts and and and, and emotions of it and trust me most days you know if you guys watch me you know I'm up I'm almost always perpetually in, in, a, in a good mood and that serves me well in what I do for a living. Um, but uh, there are all those days where you go, can I put that up online? Can it just sell? Right? But that's not how it works, guys. When you're, when you're selling something and you want to get your full value, you may have to wait a very long time. <laughs> you know, I have one of those boxes up there for $5,000. That's, that's not cheap. It's, it's going to be up there for a long time until the right person comes along. So when I look at that, I say, am I willing to wait? You can take that to a local shop, get 50 cents in the dollar, 40 cents in the dollar in some cases. Some cases they won't touch it because they have no way of moving it themselves. Only higher end collectors can take in certain products, which is why stuff like uh, the Time Twister, um, eventually it'll probably end up on eBay if I don't keep it for myself for another few years. But um, you know, the local shop could only offer me half of its value and even then, they kind of want to put some trade in there, which I understand. I mean, don't be mad about it, guys. You got to understand it. So it comes back to that thing of if you want to do something. And, and you got to have that patience to wait. Same with all magic sets. You think just because you buy these boxes, they're worth money? They're only worth what someone's willing to pay. I've told you guys that before, and I mean it. And this is just one of those days where it's coming near the end of my first set of the auction. And I realize they haven't sold yet. And, and maybe, maybe... I'm just feeling a little lost. Maybe. But not really. Because you got to have a heart of stone just to keep ahead of things. And in the end, chances are you will triumph if you have the fortitude to wait things out. And if not, hopefully you are a great creator where you can come up with new ideas and ways of moving product. Um, there's lots of ways you can do it. If this doesn't work out for me, if something doesn't work, you got to find a new avenue. Uh, I could go back to my booster lots, which uh, sold very well. But you hate the negative feedback you get from people. They don't get the exact boosters they thought they were going to get. You know, it's random three packs. <laughs> it's not guaranteed three packs. Oh, it's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, Mox Amber took a slight dive today. Uh, it went into the $16 range, which just shows it's not being gobbled up. But that doesn't mean it's not working well. Because uh, some, some modifications to my playtesting deck have worked out quite well. Um, white blue is definitely where I'm still playing. Although my blue black is, is a lot more uh, you know fiendish, uh, 
white blue is doing very well. So I'm, I'm enjoying my time with that so far. And um, don't discount Kiora, guys. I know it's only on Common. I'm going to pick up a few more play sets because I like to have in a few different decks. And, and I'm doing a Commander deck that's going to be all play. Now we have 36 Planeswalkers. Uh, Commander, hello. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll give you guys some tips on that after I try uh, a few little combos out to go with the Planeswalkers. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I have a few things coming in the mail, which I will hopefully show you in the next uh, few days. Um, and then uh, a lot of people seem to comment that like story time uh, when I do the little story bits, because I have a lot of them. You can, I have a lot of stories. A lot of strange things have happened. A lot of fun things. And and my childhood was not exactly uh, in old fashioned. Would be an understatement uh, about how I view things and do things. So I will I will pop one up. I'll try to do like one a week. Uh, you know, and I'll do it toward the end of a video so I can get my length of videos uh, longer because um, you have to have a certain amount of time and, and things put in uh, to meet the requirements uh, of monetization eventually. We're still 900 and something people away, but you never know. It could happen. Um, anyway, just thought I would mention that. It was kind of funny. So, um, yeah, Mox Amber took a bit of a dive today. Ugin took a bit of a climb again. Ulamog's on the climb again. Uh, things like Teferi and that, which are still kind of like, there's not a lot of them out there. They're all climbing. They will go down. It is only a rare. Expect it to fall, if not now, later. Cards like uh, Flip It, uh, Karn, those kind of guys, they're gonna, they're gonna all gonna, they're all gonna tank out. Wait for them. They will fall to the right price range. Um, I think you're gonna see this set though. Unlike most sets, a lot of the uncommons are all gonna be like two bucks, buck fifty, two bucks, buck fifty, two bucks across the board. It's gonna happen in this set. Even after the massive openings people do, these Planeswalkers, uh, like Teo and them, you know, three casting cost Planeswalkers with a static ability. Um, hi, I have Hexproof. You can put them in so many decks to help out that over the years, when this set is out of print, if they don't reprint these Planeswalkers later on, you're going to see these guys hit still five bucks on commons because they're only printed in this set. And I think that's an underestimate. Uh, people are underestimating the future value of this set already. Thinking, oh, it's going to be massively open. Yeah, you're right. We like to crack packs. And I'm going to crack a lot more, and I hope you crack some too. Like eggs, baby. And we're going to get a lot of these guys out there. But Magic continues to grow. It has a lot more players joining in. And, and over time, stocks dwindle. Things get eaten up. People don't want to part with them from their decks. They like to keep it where it is. New players want to get them, and that does force prices up eventually. But again... Don't ever pay what you don't want to pay. Pay what you think they're worth. That's always a good sign. Uh, all right. My, my last thought of the day. Off my bit. And we got another subscriber today. So I think we're at 35. So that's 965 to go. We're like counting down here, guys. I mean, for all I know, I could get three or four more people tonight. So I hope you guys are spreading the word to your friends out there that, you know, I need some more peeps. I need some special people. But that's not my last thought of the day. My last thought of the day was when we get to the 100 subscribers, because we're going to. The question is when. So when we get to 100 subscribers, I I would like to put it out there that we have a, an opening. We, we do, like, I'm talking like box after box after box. So I, in the next couple days, will compile a list of some of the boxes I have. And in the comment section... I need to see what boxes you guys would like to see open out of your top three choices. And we'll compile those lists up. Those of you who are with me a long time, you do, of course, definitely have more weight in your votes. That will not be, I won't tell you how much weight, but there are those of you who've been with me since the beginning, you will have more weight added to your votes. Your vote will matter more. So you guys here in my, in my, in my top you know, 20 subscribers who have been here since the beginning, you will have more weight to your votes than other people. It doesn't mean you'll be the only vote. But, but if I see that you guys are all asking for the same type of boxes that I put out there for opening, right? Then, and I also have like a montage opening too because I have a whole bunch of like fat packs from different series. So I'll put those together to basically make a box worth of cards. So that might be uh, something you guys want to open. All right. Uh, so thanks a lot for listening today, guys. It's Sean the Magic the Gathering guy. And here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you. We're going to take this final spin around as, as we do it around the place, right? Maybe, maybe you know, a little, a little Star Wars action. Maybe, maybe a little G.I. Joe Hydrofoil, 1986. What a great time that was. All right, guys, this is Sean the Magic the Gathering guy. Stay tuned tomorrow. Have a great one.